Hey, what's up? It's Nathan here, and in this video, I'm going to go over some of the Bitcoin blockchain basics while using mempool.space, which is a very handy tool for basically exploring the Bitcoin blockchain and learning different things about it, like what the current fees are, how many blocks are in the mempool and so on. So let's just go ahead and get started. So this right here is the website mempool.space and link in the description down below. And right here across the top of it, we see the blockchain, right? So here's each block, a chain of blocks equals a blockchain. And of course, this is the Bitcoin blockchain. And we can go ahead and start exploring the blocks. So here on the right hand side, the purple ones, these are the blocks that have been confirmed. So they've already been mined by the Bitcoin miners and they're confirmed confirmed on the blockchain and they're 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 set in stone basically right because blockchains are immutable which means that they can't be changed so these things are locked in place and you can see the block height right here so this if you hear that term block height that's referring to these numbers right here so 725,338 so that's how many blocks there are in the blockchain uh, right there and then right here we have the pending blocks so these are the blocks that are coming up next and so what actually is in one of these blocks well we can go ahead and click into one of them so we'll click into the one that just was mined right here so block 725,342 we get some information up here like the blocks hash the t the time it was mined the size of the block the weight of the block the median fee so these are the fees you know on average that people pay to be have their transaction be part of the block. And we'll talk about fees in just a minute here, but about three sats per byte. We have total fees. So this is the amount of fees that the miner earned by processing those transactions for the individual. So about $3,000 to mine this block. And then you've probably heard about the block reward or subsidy. And right now it's 6.25 Bitcoins per block. And you've probably heard of the halvening as well. And during the halvening, that's when that block reward gets halved. So in, I think, about two years from here, uh, this will be block dropped down from 6.25 to 3.125, right? So 50%, half of it. But obviously, the miners are basically mining for that subsidy or block reward because, you know, fees are only $3,000 for that block. Whereas if you add in that subsidy or reward, you're up to you know $261,000 per block and then we can see who actually mined the blo block so we have Binance pool and if you go into other uh, blocks you can see like ant pool here and f2 pool here so you can see you know who's mining the blocks and then what's inside the blocks is all the transactions right so the very first transaction of every block will be from the coinbase now this is not Coinbase the company. Uh, this confused me for a little while here. I thought Coinbase the company was, you know, giving out Bitcoin or something like I don't know, but Coinbase is where the subsidy comes from. Okay? So that's what that means. It's not Coinbase the company, it's something completely different. They just you know, Coinbase company stole this and named their company after it. But basically, this is the block reward and the subsidy, right? 6.324, 6.32, right there. See? And then it goes in order of who paid the most in fees. So this first transaction right here, we have the transaction ID. So we could click into there and basically hone in on this one particular transaction. And then we have the input. And this is the wallet or address that the Bitcoin is coming out of. And then over here, we have the output. So this is where the Bitcoin is going. And in this particular case, it's going to two different addresses. So it's going to this address and this address here. And then the remainder is coming back to this wallet here that sent it out. And the reason the remainder here is coming back to the wallet is due to UTXOs and how the Bitcoin blockchain functions. I'm not going to cover that here, but I'll link to a great article on UTXOs and how, how they work and everything. And it's got diagrams and it's very useful information. But the main concept is this is where the tokens are coming from and this is where they're going. And then we can see the fee that was paid. So they paid $41.29 here to do this transaction. And then again, it goes from highest to lowest. So if we came all the way down here and you can see, you know, when there's multi-sig involved and so on, just saw that yellow there. So I wanted to point that out real quick, but we could go to like the last transaction and somebody paid 13 cents to do a transaction here. And this one is a very simple transaction, right? They just sent one tenth of a Bitcoin and you can see that they basically received one tenth of a Bitcoin except for the 319 sats they paid as their fee. And so that is what is inside of a block. It's just a bunch of transactions. Of course, we could go ahead and click into the transaction ID and get a little bit more information about that particular transaction. So here we have the timestamp of that transaction. And then we have the features, so SegWit and RBF. 
gift or rebounds by fee. We have the fee that was paid, the fee rate, and we see that it was optimal here, the inputs and outputs, and then we have some more information and details right here. And so that may or may not be useful information, but right here you see the confirmations. So you might've heard this before, uh, waiting for three confirmations or six confirmations, and that's what this is referring to. So the number of confirmations is the number of blocks that have been mined. So we see one, two, three equals three confirmations. And so that's what a confirmation is. Basically every time a block is mined, that's another confirmation on top of the confirmation. So if I went to this block here, and we went to this transaction here, we would see that there were five confirmations, right? Because one, two, three, four, five. So that's how you can kind of count the confirmations. And you might've heard also that blocks are mined basically every 10 minutes. And we can kind of see that here. We have 41 minutes minus 34 is like nine minutes. And that just changed to eight minutes basically. And then we have two minutes and then we have like eight minutes here. And then we have eight minutes here. And then we have like nine minutes here. So it's not always gonna be 10 minutes between blocks. Sometimes it's much less, sometimes it's seconds or sometimes it's hours. Like I've literally waited for a block to process for over an hour before, but on average it's 10 minutes. So that's where you hear that. And you can see in the pending blocks, we have in about 10 minutes, in about 21 minutes, in about 31 minutes, et cetera. So 10 minutes spaced apart. And you know, it's in about those amount of times. And so that's how you can look at a transaction. Now, of course, you can also click on these addresses. So if you wanna check out this wallet right here and see what's going on with this particular address, we can see the amount they've ever received, the amount they've ever sent, their current balance, and then a list of all the transactions per for that particular wallet and what all they've done. So that could be cool if you wanna you know, see what you've done with your wallets, you can go ahead and plug your wallet address right here and see all the ins and outs of that particular wallet. So that can be a pretty cool thing to you know, see what you've done in the past. Let me come back out to the main page here and talk about fees real quick. So we can see right here, the pending block for this first block here is about four sats per V-byte. So if you're able to set your own fee with the transaction you're performing, you know that if you set it like at four or maybe five sats per V-byte, you'll likely be included in this first block here, where if you set it lower, you're probably gonna be pushed back to one of these other pending blocks, which right now are all about one sat per V-byte. So really, if you do you know anything above one, you'll probably be in the next block. And I'll do a sample transaction here in just a second so you can see what I'm talking about. And I just wanna point out that certain exchanges and apps, like for example, Voyager, Coinbase, Crypto.com, uh, when you send your crypto out of those particular exchanges, Changes, they just charge you a flat fee, like 50,000 sats, no matter what's going on in the mempool, they just charge you whatever that fee is and you can't adjust it. But if you have control over the fee you wanna spend, well then you can come to mempool.space and see you know, what the going fee is. And basically to be included in this first block, you want it at about five or more, or you're gonna be included in a, another block. And right here we get a summary of the transaction fee. So low priority is three sats, which is about 17 cents. Four sats per V-byte, 23 cents, or six sats per V-byte is 35 cents. Uh, we have the difficulty rating, which you might've heard of, and it gives you an estimate of where it's gonna be going. And basically the higher the difficulty adjustment means there's more people mining, which means the network is more secure. So that's just a little something. There's pretty graphs and everything here and a little bit more details about like latest blocks and latest transactions and stuff like that. Uh, but let's go ahead and do an example here. And we'll be able to watch our transaction through mempool.space and I think it'll be a good overall experience. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna send some Bitcoin to myself. So I have another wallet. So I'm gonna grab that address here and I'm over here on my node and I wanna go ahead and withdraw some Bitcoin and I'll just do 25,000 sats right there. So about $10 and I'll plug my address in there. And now I can go ahead and set my transaction fee here. And we see that it set it at three sats per V-byte, which is about 60 minutes. I can go ahead and flip to custom here and I could, you know, decrease it to one, or since we can look over here at mempool, that space, we know that if I wanna be in the next block here, I need to be probably above two. Um, so just for the sake of example, and so that way I can finish recording this video in a somewhat reasonable time, I'm gonna set it at five sats per V-byte, and then I'm gonna go ahead and review the withdrawal, and I'm gonna go ahead and confirm the withdrawal, and it gives me this transaction ID, ID right here, so I can go ahead and copy that, I can come over here to mempool.space, plug in the transaction ID and search, and transaction not found yet, but there it is. Okay, so here's my fee. So I'm gonna be paying about 32 cents. 
We can see this little arrow here pointing to this first block. So in about 10 minutes, hopefully, uh, this block will be mined and my transaction will be confirmed. And we can be looking at the inputs and outputs. So here's my input right here. And we can see the 25,000 sets that I'm sending and then what's coming back to me because that's how the UTXOs work. And again, a link in the description down below on UTXOs. And I'll be back after this block is confirmed. All right, so this is kind of a good demonstration here. So as you can see, it's been 29 minutes since the last block was mined. And then I had my transaction in this first block here, but since it's taken, you know, 30 minutes now, as opposed to 10 minutes, uh, my transaction has actually been bumped out of this first block into this second block here. So basically these blocks, the pending blocks, they're, they're pending, right? So the transactions inside of these blocks will change depending on, you know, what transactions are trying to be in that block and how much fees they're willing to pay. So right now, in order to get into this first block here, the average fee is about 10 sats per vbyte. And remember, I spent five sats per vbyte, so my transaction got pushed out of that block because I'm not willing to pay enough. So I just want to point that out real quick that these pending blocks are constantly changing. And if you don't have a high enough fee, well, you might get pushed back, especially if there's a long time between blocks being mined. Now, while we're waiting for that block to confirm, I want to show you how you can set your fees in Blue Wallet. And I have a video on Blue Wallet, so if you're interested in learning more about Blue Blue Wallet, link in the description down below. But we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and send a payment. So we'll click on send here, and we can go ahead and enter the address and the amount we want to send. But what I really wanted to point out was the fee here. So we could go ahead and tap on fee, and we see that it brings up you know some sample fees that we could uh, go ahead and select. So we have fast, medium, slow, and they're all one set per VByte. So the, the mempool is pretty low right now, uh, which is nice for people doing transactions. So uh, there's no better time to do a Bitcoin transaction than right now. But anyway, if you wanted to change it, you could click on custom down here and you could go ahead and type in, you know, you wanna do 100 sats per VByte if you wanted to. And of course that'd be pretty expensive, but I just wanted to show you how you can change your fees in Blue Wallet since we have a few minutes while we wait for that block to confirm. And finally, my block is confirmed. We had to wait like 46 minutes for that next block to appear. And then I got kicked out of two blocks and finally I'm right here. And then we see another one processed or was mined in the same exact minute as a block that mine was mined in. So there's a perfect example of waiting 42 minutes and also blocks being mined within seconds of each other. But on average, the blocks are 10 minutes apart and that pretty much concludes this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. Any sorts of likes, comments, subscribes would be greatly appreciated and I hope you have a great rest of the day day.